Uh, I was told to have elevated testosterone. What can be done? Uh, metformin. Is that the language? Okay, so Colette, presumably we're talking about a situation here of you know, polycystic ovarian syndrome. That's where metformin very commonly uh, is recommended. It, part of the question is what, what are you trying to treat? So if you're trying to treat the symptoms of excessive testosterone, that's typically acne, facial hair, abdominal hair, stuff like that. There are medicines that specifically address that that are not metformin. The most commonly used is called spironolactone. And basically, it is a medication that sort of blocks the effects of testosterone. So if you haven't heard of that one, spironolactone, that's a good one to think about. Metformin is is tricky. There's not great evidence that metformin is going to do anything particularly positive in polycystic ovarian syndrome, other than maybe it leads to some weight loss. And to the extent that you lose weight, that can help with PCOS. It tends to cause weight loss probably mostly through changes in appetite, maybe some upset stomach, maybe some GI disruptions. You know, diarrhea is the most common uh, side effect. Some people lose some weight on metformin. And, and, you know, there's studies that show if you lose about 10% of your body weight and you have PCOS, you can reverse a lot of the effects. So that's kind of where metformin is. I mean, the main reason to use it, of course, is if someone has diabetes, you know, gestational diabetes or just adult onset diabetes. So not great evidence otherwise for using it in PCOS. No evidence I'm aware of that directly shows that metformin reduces your testosterone level. So it's mostly through weight loss. Um, and then, like I said, something like uh, um, spironolactone to help reduce the effects of the excess testosterone.